Today the topic of our discussion is the causes of primary amenorrhea which is defined as the absence of menses at age 15 years in the presence or absence of normal growth and secondary sexual characteristics. For primary amenorrhea topic, I would recommend Asha Chohan book of Obstetric and Gynecology. And in order to understand the main causes of primary amenorrhea, let us understand these four groups of disorders. First of all, absent secondary sexual characteristics. Secondly, normal secondary sexual characteristics. Third, the heterosexual development. And fourth, the constitutional development. Now, we would divide the primary amenorrhea with absent secondary sexual characteristics into two main groups. The group with the short stature and the group with the normal stature. So, in case of the sh short stature, like primary amenorrhea with the absent secondary sexual characteristics and short stature, we have further two groups. The first is that of the hypothalamic pituitary dysfunction. Second is ovarian failure. So, in hypothalamic pituitary dysfunction, which is in fact the hypogonadotropic hypogonadism, we would include the conditions like first of all hydrocephalus. Secondary, the craniopharyngioma, panhypopituitarism, and when it comes to ovarian failure, it is basically the hypergonadotrophic hypergonadism, and it includes the conditions like Turner syndrome, mosaic Turner, and mixed gonadal dysgenesis. Now, coming to the normal stature means the primary amenorrhea with absent secondary sexual characteristic but the normal stature we have two main groups two main deviant first is hypothalamic pituitary dysfunction which is hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism and that include the isolated GnRH deficiency secondly the Coleman syndrome hyperprolactinemia excessive exercise weight loss or anorexia nervosa next come ovarian failure which is hypergonadotropic hypogonadism and that include true gonadal dysgenesis premature menopause galactosemia so far we have studied the primary amenorrhea with the absent secondary sexual characteristics and two main deviants like short stature and the normal stature. Now we are going to discuss the primary amenorrhea with the normal secondary sexual characteristics and that include anatomical abnormalities, androgen insensitivity syndrome, resistant ovary syndrome, polycystic ovarian disease and prolactinoma. Now, which anatomical abnormalities do we suspect in patients with primary amenorrhea with the normal secondary sexual characteristics? That might be first of all, imperforate hymen, secondly, transverse vaginal septum, then absent vagina and functioning uterus, and absent vagina with a non-functioning uterus. Coming to the third main deviant, that is the heterosexual development, and that include the congenital adrenal hyperplasia, 5 alpha reductase deficiency, ovarian adrenal tumor, absent antimalarian factor, true hermaphrodites. The last group of primary amenorrhea is that of the constitutional delay. Now, this is a whole summary of all the causes of primary amenorrhea. Let us revise again. So, we basically divide the primary amenorrhea causes into four main groups. Primary amenorrhea, with the absent secondary sexual characteristics as you can see in the blue table secondly the primary amenorrhea with the normal secondary sexual characteristics as you can see in the yellow box and in the green box you can see the heterosexual development and in the orange box you can see the constitutional development now the primary amenorrhea with the absent secondary sexual characteristics are further divided into the group with the normal with the short stature and the group with the normal stature so the group with the short stature means short stature with the primary amenorrhea and absent secondary sexual characteristics we have two further deviant first is hypothalamic pituitary dysfunction secondly ovarian failure so in hypothalamic pituitary dysfunction means the hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism we have conditions like hydrocephalus craniopharyngioma and panhypopituitarism second group is that of the ovarian failure which is hypergonadotrophic hypogonadism and that include the Turner syndrome, mosaic Turner and mixed gonadal dysgenesis. Then the primary amenorrhea with absent secondary sexual characteristics of the normal stature group 
we have to further remain. First is hypothalamic maturity dysfunction and secondly, ovarian failure. So, in hypothalamic maturity dysfunction means the hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism include isolated GnRH deficiency, Kalman syndrome, hyperprotectinemia, excessive exercise, weight loss, anorexia nervosa. And in ovarian failure, we have two gonadal dysgenesis, premature menopause and galactosemia. Normal secondary sexual characteristics are divided into anatomical abnormalities like imperforate hymen, transverse vaginal septum, absent vagina and functioning uterus, and absent vagina and non-functioning uterus. And the second group is that of the androgen insensitivity, resistant ovary syndrome, polycystic ovarian disease, and prolactinoma. Third group is that of the heterosexual development, which include the congenital adrenal hyperplasia, 5 alpha reductase deficiency, ovarian adrenal tumor, absent antimolarian factor, and true hermaphrodite. And fourth group is that of the constitutional development. I would like to end my. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we will talk about the diagnosis of primary amenorrhea. We have list of tests for the diagnosis of primary amenorrhea and those include first of all the different blood tests like FSH LH level, serum prolactin, 17 alpha hydroxyprogesterone level, 5 alpha reductase level, testosterone level and dehydroepiandrosterone level. The other test is that pelvic ultrasound, then the karyotyping and advanced imaging modalities like CT scan and gonadal biopsy. Now slowly and gradually I will tell you which test is needed to be done in the evaluation of primary amenorrhea case. So if a patient comes with primary amenorrhea with absent secondary sexual characteristics, we have two groups of patients. First is the group with the normal height and second is the group with the short height. So in the group of patient with the normal height, we will check the FSH and LH levels. And the patient may have low FSH and LH level or the patient may have high FSH and LH level. In case of low FSH and LH levels, the differential diagnosis include isolated GnRH deficiency, olfactor genital syndrome and hyperprolactinoma. But when we have high FSH and LH levels, the differential diagnosis include premature ovarian failure, gonadal dysgenesis, which include the karyotype of 46XX and 46XY, and galactosemia. In a group of patients with a short height, uh, we have to look for the associated features. In some patients, the associated features may be absent, and in another group of patients, we may have the uh, certain associated features like web neck is there and increased angle is there, means the increased carry and carrying angle. So when we have the associated features absent, then in that case, we have to check the FSH and LH levels that is usually low. And in that case, we advise CT scan in order to diagnose the intracranial lesions. But when we have these associated features, then we do the karyotyping to diagnose different conditions like 46, uh, 45 XO, 45 XO and 46 XX, 45 XO and 46 XY. Now coming to another group of patients in which we have primary amenorrhea with the normal secondary sexual characteristics. In them we do ultrasound and in certain group of patients the uterus is present on ultrasound and in another group of patients the uterus is absent on ultrasound. So when the uterus is present we need to measure the LH and FSH levels. There might be an out, uh, outflow obstruction in one group of the patient and normal anatomy in another group of patient. So normal anatomy with increased prolactin indicate prolactinoma and when LH and FSH ratio is high that include polycystic ovarian disease. When LH and FSH levels are high that indicate the resistant ovarian syndrome. When LH FSH ratio is normal and prolactin is normal as well that, in, that indicate the constitutional development or the constitutional delay. In the group of the patient in which the uterus is absent on ultrasound, we do karyotyping and if we get the karyotype of 46XX along with the absent uterus and vagina that indicate MRKH. But if the karyotype indicate 46XX along with the absent uterus and vagina that indicate the androgen insensitivity syndrome. Now what tests are needed to be done in order to diagnose the heterosexual development? First is that of hydrox 17 hydroxyprogesterone. If that level is high, it indicates the congenital adrenal hyperplasia. 
and uh, along with the pelvic ultrasound if we have increased testosterone that indicate the androgen producing ovarian tumor and if the CT scan show adrenals tumor along with a high DHEA level high testosterone level that indicate adrenal tumor the gonadal biopsy is helpful to diagnose the true hermaphrodites now these tables indicates the different causes of primary amenorrhea along with the uh, appropriate diagnostic tests like we have a group of disorder in which there is primary amenorrhea with absent secondary sexual characteristics and short stature in that case if we have hypothalamic pituitary dysfunction and the conditions like hydrocephalus is suspected then we do ct scan for that for craniopharyngioma we do ct scan for panhypopituitarism we do ct scan certain group of patients may have ovarian failures and in the turner syndrome diagnosis we do the karyotyping for mosaic turner karyotyping for mixed gonadal distances karyotyping is helpful another group of patient may have primary amenorrhea with absent secondary sexual characteristics and the normal stature so if there is a hypothalamic pituitary dysfunction like hypogonadotropic hypogonadism like conditions and we are suspecting isolated GnRH deficiency, then GnRH level would be helpful. Coleman syndrome is diagnosed by GnRH and LHFSH levels. Hyperprolactinemia by the serum prolactin level. Excessive exercise, weight loss, and anorexia nervosa can affect the hormonal levels like LHFSH. For ovarian failure also, along with the LHFSH levels, we do uh, the karyotyping in order to diagnose the different conditions like uh, true gonadal dysgenesis and for premature menopause, we do LH and FSH level and for galactosemia, the prolactin level might be helpful. We have a group of disorder in which we, there is the normal uh, secondary sexual characteristics and in them, we may have certain anatomical abnormalities like imperfect hymen, transverse vaginal septum, absent vagina and functioning uterus, absent vagina and non-functioning uterus. In all these cases, the ultrasound is very helpful. Androgen sensitivity by ultrasound, resistance ovary syndrome not only by ultrasound but also hormonal level, also polycystic ovary disease by the ultrasound plus hormone level, prolactinoma by the serum prolactin level. The congenital adrenal hyperplasia is diagnosed by increased 17 alpha hydroxy progesterone level and 5 alpha reductase level is ch uh, checked in order to diagnose a condition of 5 alpha reductase deficiency. And ovarian adrenal tumors are, are diagnosed not only by the CT scans but also by the DHE levels and the serum testosterone levels. True hermaphrodite is diagnosed by doing the gonadal uh, biopsy. And the constitutional development diagnosis is purely the clinical one. So that brings Bismillah ar rahim Today we will talk about the management of primary amenorrhea. And the management of primary amenorrhea depends upon the cause. So, one by one, we will discuss the management options of each group of disorder causing primary amenorrhea. So, how to manage a group of patients with a primary amenorrhea along with a short stature and absent secondary sexual characteristics? First of all, we will discuss the treatment for achieving the height. In patients with hypothalamic pituitary dysfunction, the height is achieved with human growth hormone which is given in the dose of 0.2 microgram per kg per day first. Then what treatment will you provide for uh, the development of secondary sexual characteristics? Initially, low dose estrogen. At the dose of 0.1 mg, ethanol estradiol is given twice daily for 3 weeks every month for several months. Once secondary sexual characteristics develop, the patients are started on combined oral contraceptive pills as HRT. How to do the management of fertility prospects in them? Ovulation can be induced by using human menopausal gonadotrophin injection. Fertility prospects are extremely poor in patients with Turner syndrome and mixed gonadal dysgenesis and they are made sexually mature with a low dose estrogen and then given combined oral contraceptive pills as hormone replacement therapy. The gonades in mixed gonadal dysgenesis are removed as the risk of malignancy arising from them is about 30%. So, in patients with short stature, primary amenorrhea, with absent secondary sexual characteristics, if they are having hypothalamic pituitary dysfunction and hydrocephalus is diagnosed, so that is managed by pediatric surgeons. The most common treatment for hydrocephalus is the surgical insertion of drainage system called shunt. The craniopharyngioma is managed by surgery, radiations and chemotherapy. 
The pan hypopituitarism is managed by HRT. Among the patients with ovarian failures, we have group of disorders like first of all Turner syndrome and that is managed by high dose growth hormone and estrogen therapy. Secondly, mosaic Turner. The treatment of mosaic Turner is with recombinant growth hormone which is given in the dose of 0.375 mg per kg per week divided in 7 once, we, once daily dose with or without oxandrolone. Now the mixed gonadal dystenesis is managed by hormone replacement therapy and gonadectomy depending upon the level of gonadal insufficiency. Now what are the management options in normal stature along with the primary amenorrhea with the absent secondary sexual characteristics? So for the treatment of developing secondary sexual characteristics, initially we would give low dose estrogen 0.01 mg ethanol estradiol that is given twice daily for 3 weeks every month for several months. Once the secondary sexual characteristics develop, these patients are started on combined oral contraceptive pills as hormone replacement therapy. Now, how would you do treatment of pituitary adenoma? The pituitary adenoma may require the surgical treatment. Now, how would you do the treatment of true gonadal dystenesis? The patient with a mixed gonadal dystenesis are made sexually mature with a low dose estrogen and then given combined oral contraceptive pills as hormone replacement therapy. How would you do treatment of patients with XY genotypes? These patients would require gonadectomy. Now coming to the management of patients with the normal secondary sexual characteristics like those with anatomical abnormality would require the surgical reconstruction. The patients with androgen insensitivity syndromes are managed by vaginoplasty plus gonadectomy followed by combined oral contraceptive pills as hormone replacement therapy and fertility is not possible with androgen insensitivity syndrome. Coming to the management of resistant ovary syndrome, the resistant ovary syndrome patient may respond to combined oral contraceptive pills followed by ovulation inductions with clomiphene citrate and fertility is restored. How to do the management of a case of polycystic ovarian disease? The veg resection plus laparoscopic ovarian drilling is done in such patients followed by ovulation induction with a clomiphene citrate. Now, how to do management of a case of heterosexual development? Like we have a group of patients with congenital adrenal hyperplasia. They may respond to steroid therapy and the fertility is restored with a clomiphene citrate. How to do the management of ovarian and adrenal tumors? The ovarian and adrenal tumors need surgical resection. How to do a management of a case of constitutional delay? If no cause is found on detailed evaluation and the patient doesn't want to conceive, the treatment can be delayed up to the age 20 with a spontaneous menstruation starts in most of these patients. Okay, so we have to do counseling that wait up to the age 20 because sometime the uh, amenorrhea is delayed up to the age 20 in these patients. So spontaneous menstruation may start in most of these patients. So that brings us to the end of my presentation. I would like to complete my presentation with this quote. You don't get the results by focusing on the results. You get the results by focusing on the actions that produce results. So focus on your goals as the big results require big ambition. So thank you so much. Wish you best of luck. Allah Hafiz.